Good evening and welcome to the Town of Lexington Council meeting. This meeting is being held at Town Hall Monday evening, February 5th, 2018. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed several times on the town's information channel two over the next week. I'm Steve McDougall, the mayor of the town of Lexington. At this time, I would like to introduce to you my fellow council members. To my left is Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Good evening. To her left is council member Todd Carnes. Good evening. To his left is council member Steve Baker. Good evening. To my right is council member Kathy Manis. Good evening. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like to um, welcome um, Christina Brown, a senior at River Bluff High School, who is our intern, and she is here tonight. So we're glad that she's here. Welcome. Glad you could join us. To her right is Council Member Ted Stambolidis. Good evening, y'all. And to his right is Council Member Ron Williams. Good evening. At this time, I would like to welcome Pastor Kevin Thompson from Watershed Fellowship here in Lexington to offer invocation for tonight's meeting. Welcome and glad to see you. Yeah, good to be here, good to be here. Um, I thought I'd shape our time of prayer around defining moments. Um, Psalm 103, one through two says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In a book I've been reading, it's called The Power of Moments. It says that our lives are measured in moments and defining moments are the ones that endure in our memories. And so we want to create defining moments, moments that people will remember forever and affect their lives and change their lives. It says that, um, that people really don't remember what is in the daily script. You know, I asked our congregation what defining moments were in their lives. And not a single one of them said my preaching. <laughs> so, uh, but that's what they expect me to do. But it was the uh, late night trip to Charleston with their child was in the hospital and spending the night all night there. Or it was um, somebody uh, remembering their name after their first visit. Or uh, someone getting a call and praying for them um, over a situation that they really needed help in. It's those kind of things that uh, people need us to do. And uh, it says that, uh, that we find these defining moments during peaks, pits, and uh, transitions in our lives and so as people experience great heights the highs in their lives how do we shape them even higher and make them have greater peaks and then how do we fill in the pits when uh, things are really going bad how do we come along and comfort them and then in the transitions of life having babies getting married um, different things like that how do we uh, help support them in the midst of that and there's four things um, the first is that we bring elevation, we increase value in people's lives um, that are going through these things and make it more meaningful. We bring insight, we bring new understanding and wisdom to the situation. We bring pride, we celebrate the victories and we recognize the efforts of people. And then lastly, we bring connection to have deeper relationships um, in the midst of life. So I'm going to pray that uh, this year would be a year of great defining moments for each of y'all in your lives, but also as you invest in Lexington, that we might have defining moments here as a town. So let's Absolutely. Pray. Uh, Father, we thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness. We thank you for the scripts that you give each of us in our lives, the, the daily things that we are called to do, and we need to be faithful in those. But Lord, we ask that you might give us opportunities to meet people and to go off script in their lives, to, to encourage them in the midst of uh, the highs, and also, Lord, to support them in uh, the low moments, the pits. I pray that you would help us to bring great value uh, to people's lives, uh, that there's more than the rat race of getting things done, but there is meaning, there is higher meaning in why we do what we do. I pray that you would give us great wisdom and that we can impart that so people can understand and people can um, uh, walk through life with a, a greater sense of um, just how and why and when. Uh, Lord, help us to be wise. We pray, too, that you would help us to uh, go deeper in our relationships. We meet so many different people, and uh, we interact and we shake hands and we say different things, but, Lord, I pray you would give us um, just the time to slow down and to get to know each other better and to invest in each other. And Lord, I pray that as uh, the town 
council goes through great victories. I pray that we can learn how to celebrate and to uh, recognize all those who are investing in our town. And Lord, that we might support uh, those who are going through very difficult times. So Lord, help us to be mindful. And we ask that we would remember you and that you would, um, that our souls would be blessed, that we might bless you and that uh, we might remember all of your benefits. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Pastor Thompson, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to see you, and we're glad to see you up and doing well. Thank you for being with us. At this time, do we have any uh, first responders with us tonight? Do we have any one that is a first responder? Would you mind coming forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance after we saw such a tragic <laughs> week? <laughs> we'd, like to, we'd like to have you come forward and honor you for your service and... Uh, have you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you mind sharing with us what you do? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much for what you do. We appreciate you. At this time, I will call the meeting to order and would like to present to you the 2018 State of the Town Address. This year, we have produced a video to highlight the town's 2017 achievements. The video also spotlights many of our upcoming projects that you will see going on around town. Before we get started, the video will play here in the council chambers and on the town's Spectrum Community Access Channel 2 and will be replayed on our website. I would also like to thank our very own digital media coordinator, Jennifer Dowden and Daryl Pritchard. Uh, for their time and effort that they spent putting this video together. Um, together, they spent 40 hours a piece on it, and we spent almost seven hours filming it. Um, so it is my pleasure now to present to you the 2018 State of the Town Address. I'm Mayor Steve McDougall, and welcome to the State of the Town Address, a synopsis of our town's accomplishments in 2017 and an outline of 2018's goals. I want to take time to recap the progress we made last year, along with projects and concerns Council and I will undertake this year and beyond. First, it is a continued privilege and honor to be your mayor. And I look forward to continuing to serve you and leading the town of Lexington. At this time, I would like to acknowledge my fellow council members, Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston, Council Member Kathy Manis, Council Member Ted Stambolitis, Council Member Todd Carnes, Council Member Ron Williams, and Council Member Steve Baker, along with all of our staff for their dedication to the town. These men and women are the foundation of this Banner community. I look forward to seeing what we can achieve together in 2018. As we prepare to spring forward, let's take a moment to highlight a few of the vital accomplishments from this past year. 2017 was another momentous year of fulfillment for the town of Lexington. First and foremost, we saw continued success of our Ice House Amphitheater. In its first year, we hosted 50 events and greeted over 30,000 guests and were named the 2017 Municipal Association of South Carolina Achievement Award winner. In addition to our signature concert series, Lexington Live, the venue has been home to Movies in the Park, Lexington School District One Art Showcases, Lexington Community Band, and the historic 
total solar eclipse. Along with welcoming South Carolina natives Patrick Davis and Edwin McCain for our first large scale concert. We look forward to a bigger and better second year, showcasing our wonderful downtown to residents and visitors alike. Learn more at icehouseamphitheater.com. It is crystal clear the town of Lexington is the place where citizens want to live, work, play, and learn. As we see downtown redevelop, Lexington will continue to reap the rewards through record annexations. In 2017, we had 32 annexations, encompassing 775 acres of property. This is our largest annexation in 40 years and equates to an 11% increase in the total area of town limits. Additionally, the town saw an increase in the past year, watching the number of business licenses boom from 3,592 in the year 2016 to 3,675 in 2017. Furthermore, we had an increase in gross sales during the same time frame, catapulting from $1.9 billion to $2 billion. We all know a safe community is a top priority for residents and businesses. Lexington's economic growth can be partly attributed to our top-notch police department. In addition to being internationally accredited from the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies since 2009, this past year saw a significant reduction in crime. Burglary reports are down 46% while shoplifting went down to 19%. This is a direct result from the department's 2017 strategic plan priority list. Additionally, the Lexington Police Department works diligently to expand their community presence. Citizens have been able to directly meet, greet, and participate in a variety of events, including child seat safety checks, bike rodeos, Coffee with a Cop, and the annual National Night Out, which was named an award winner within the category of 15,000 to 50,000 population. The town of Lexington continues to thrive with the success of our adaptive computerized signalization system. In 2017, we finished the first phase of the project, which focuses on alleviating traffic congestion. This high-tech traffic management system monitors and synchronizes traffic signals to balance traffic flow in real-time conditions and link all the lights within the town limits. Currently, 19 intersections are online focused on downtown Sunset Boulevard at I-20 and North Lake Drive towards the Lake Murray Dam. We are working on phase two, which will include 16 intersections. In addition to having all 35 signals in town on the system, we are partnering with Lexington Medical Center to add an additional 12 intersections in the campus proximity. For this project, the town received funding from the Central Midlands Council of Governments with the Columbia Area Transportation Study share funding the County of Lexington, and the Lexington Medical Center for a total of $6.6 .6 million. This system will help place Lexington at the forefront of traffic management in South Carolina through the latest innovative computer technology. This is just another example of the town of Lexington being proactive in addressing current needs and preparing for future growth. Along with executing transportation programs, the town has continued to concentrate efforts on our utility infrastructure through our capital improvement projects. Our East Main Street water line project replaced 3,241 feet of pipe, which has been in service for over 90 years. Additionally, 10,000 square feet of sidewalk was removed and replaced, extending from South Lake Drive to the Old Mill. The town's key to success is fiscal responsibility, which has led to continued 
national recognition. The Finance Department recently was awarded the Governmental Financial Officers Association Comprehensive Annual Finance Report Award for the 19th straight year. And for the eighth straight year, the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Through our dedicated finance department staff, the town remains rock solid and financially sound and was recently given an updated credit rating from Standard & Poor's. Our water and sewer system went from an AA- to a AA rating, labeled high investment grade. It should be noted that this stellar rating provides us access to the lowest interest rates for long-term capital projects, thereby reducing the cost of services and minimizing taxes for our citizens. The Town of Lexington is staying very watchful of how we invest your tax dollars. In doing so, we collaborated with the County of Lexington and Lexington School District 1 to implement the Corley Mill TIF. The Corridor Redevelopment Tax Increment Financing District consists of 264 acres and will generate $18 million, which will be added to the $7.5 million raised through the 2% hospitality tax for the Corley Mill at Sunset Boulevard Gateway Improvements. Finally, the town was able to restore 14 Mile Creek Trail after it suffered significant damage from the October 2015 floods. As part of the rebuilding process, the town removed debris from the creek, reinstalled two-thirds of the matting to meet ADA compliance, repaired and leveled the first two bridges, connecting them with an additional walkway for added support, repaired and leveled the classroom stage, which was knocked off its foundation and removed the last two bridges that were unable to be repaired. In total, staff put in 830 man hours, along with numerous equipment hours to complete the project, which cost $76,000. We expect approximately 75% reimbursement from FEMA to offset these expenses. These projects strengthen how our proactive, progressive vision and planning is continuing to create an outstanding, vibrant and livable community not only for today, but for future generations, our children and our grandchildren. As you can see, we've had some incredible improvements this past year, but there's always more work that can and will be done. Here are a few of our challenging issues we will focus on into 2018 and beyond. As previously mentioned, council staff and I are dedicated to alleviating traffic congestion. Our long-awaited downtown improvements, which includes the transition to one-way pairs along Lake Drive and Church Street, began construction this past October and is projected to be completed this summer. This is the first traffic and tourism project funded by the 2% hospitality tax. The purpose of this project is to make the intersection of Main Street at North Lake Drive flow more efficiently by splitting the northbound and southbound movements. The signals at Lake Drive and Church Street can service twice as many vehicles as it does today. This increase in efficiency will allow for more green signal time to be allotted to East and West Main Street at Lake Drive and Church Street. In addition to this project, the town is constructing a 150 space parking lot along South Church Street to serve the Lexington Municipal Complex, Palmetto Collegiate Institute, Virginia Hilton Park, and the Ice House Amphitheater. Also as part of the 2% hospitality tax, the town will tackle traffic woes focusing on crossroad improvements at Lake Drive and Sunset Boulevard, and Corley Mill at Sunset Boulevard Gateway improvements. Phase one of our crossroad improvements will include Harmon Street extension. The focus of this project is to improve safety and operation with the relocation of Dreer Street at North Lake Drive to connect at the existing Azalea Drive. This new road will be Harmon Street. Additionally, 
The project includes widening of North Lake Drive from South Church Street to Dreer Street. The project is currently in the final design stages and is slated to start construction this fall. The Corley Mill at Sunset Boulevard Gateway Improvement is currently under design. The focus of the project is to improve current traffic flow through the Corley Mill Road and US 378 intersection, which serves as the primary gateway to the town. Currently, the average daily traffic on Sunset Boulevard is approximately 45,000 vehicles. On Corley Mill Road, approximately 9,100 vehicles per day. Additionally, the I-20 westbound ramp improvements include proposed modifications to the traffic patterns in order to reduce or eliminate travelers exiting the ramp and crossing multiple lanes of traffic in an attempt to make a left turn at Jenny Lane. The improvements call for allowing the motorist to make a right turn at the westbound ramp signal and proceed into the left lane for Jenny Lane. Construction is slated to begin this summer. All of these traffic and tourism projects include the addition of wayfinding signage which will direct residents and guests to specific landmarks throughout the town of Lexington. Council will be reviewing proposed designs in February. Finally, we are implementing the Lexington Transportation Improvement Program. The town is working long-term on 30 smaller projects that will further address alleviating traffic woes within Lexington. These projects are being evaluated by a metric system, including traffic safety improvement, constructability, permit ability, and economic community impacts. Projects will be addressed as funding becomes available. The Town of Lexington is also tackling capital improvement projects. With the addition of a town maintenance facility, this project is currently underway and will house the Utilities Department staff along with providing equipment storage for our parks and sanitation, police, transportation, and utilities departments. By having one centralized location, we will be able to create additional parking at Town Hall and a secure, protected area for all of our equipment. The Cromer Road pump station is being designed to increase the wastewater pumping capacity to 12.5 million gallons a day, flowing to the state-of-the-art joint wastewater treatment plant on the Congaree River. When finished, future plans include a 30-inch parallel line to also tie into the joint facility. Finally, we will continue our beautification efforts with improvements to Virginia Hilton Park. The town is underway with constructing a design plan that will focus on providing a facelift to our oldest and most utilized park. Our goal is to preserve the qualities that make Virginia Hilton Park so special while upgrading its aesthetic for the next generation. The town is also working with FEMA and DHEC in the rebuilding of Gibson Pond Dam. Design is currently underway and construction is slated to begin this year. The project is anticipated to cost $2.5 million. It is our vision not only to bring back the safety of the dam to our community, but to restore the pond to its natural state so all the citizens can enjoy its beauty. To feature our fantastic community, we provide ample events and activities throughout the year. The town, along with the Lexington County Recreation and Aging Commission, hosts several events, including the Flashlight Easter Egg Hunt and Carnival, Movies in the Park, the Snowball Festival, along with highlighting charitable senior programs such as Meals on Wheels and Project Warmth. Additionally, our community was honored to host the 2017 Big South Conference Baseball Championship at the Lexington County Stadium for the second consecutive year. Other events include Special Needs Community Day, St. Patrick's Shamrock Parade and Carnival, Kids Day of Lexington, Lexington's live concert series, the Wine Walk on Main, the Town of Lexington's Farmer's Market, 
and the Lexington Police Department Fall Fest. This year, we are proud to welcome the Coastal Plain League's All-Star Show, hosted by the Lexington County Blowfish. In addition to these signature events, the town is proud to support homegrown efforts like the Lexington Community Band and the Lexington County Museum, providing entertainment for the entire family. We hope to see you around town for these wonderful events. The town strives to completely engage the public through various communication and marketing efforts. The town launched our new website this past summer, which includes user-friendly and interactive pages. Make sure to stay informed with the town's news and events through our website. Town topics, our social media pages of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our community access station on Spectrum Cable, formerly Time Warner, which is airing this State of the Town Address and Council Meeting live. Additionally, the Lexington Police Department has their own social media pages of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, while the Ice House Amphitheater can be found on Facebook and Instagram. We are truly spellbound by how many projects that have come to realization since we implemented the vision plan less than six years ago. The state of the town address reflects the outstanding work that is being done and how we can lead our community forward respectfully and responsibly. Each employee at the town of Lexington has added valuable input to the achievements we have seen tonight. And I want to thank them all in making our community a place you want to live, work, play, and learn. Lexington is my hometown, and I'm still awestruck to see the positive growth and strides we have taken through the years. I wish that all of you have a continued healthy, happy, and prosperous 2018. God bless you, your family, our town, the state of South Carolina, and our great nation, the United States of America. Good night, and God bless. Well, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did uh, enjoyed making it and putting it together. Um, it was our first time doing something like that, but we were excited. We had the technology this year that we wanted to try out. Uh, you saw some drone footage from our new drone that we have. Uh, Daryl is a licensed FAA operator and does just phenomenal work with the drone. Um, we had some other technology that we utilized and just felt like it was time to try to mix it up and do it a little bit better. We had some beautiful pictures we wanted to share. They tell a better story than I could ever tell sitting up here reading it to you. Um, so at this time, thank you very much for coming and hearing the 2018 State of the Town Address. At this time, we will take a 10 minute recess to accommodate any of the news media needs that we may have. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. before you do that, I yes. just want to say something. I've served on council 20 years and I sit here in awe just watching that. You did a fantastic job. Staff, y'all did a fantastic job. I, I mean, really, like I said, I, tears come to my eyes a couple of times just watching it. Y'all did a great job. Thank you so much for what you did. Good job. I agree. Thank you. We'll take a 10 minute recess. Welcome back. We will carry on with tonight's meeting. At this time, I would like to report on our executive session this evening. During our executive session, we had two legal issues. One issue regarding pending litigation and another issue legal advice related to a proposed town ordinance. We had three contra contractual issues. One issue was an economic development matter. We had one issue related to a utilities contract and we had proposed sale of town-owned property. No vote was taken in our executive session. Do I have a motion to ratify the mayor's executive session report? So moved. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Council member made a second set motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Deletions for tonight's agenda. Are there any deletions on the agenda for tonight? 
Hearing none, we will move on to approval of minutes, copies of the minutes for council work session on January 22nd, 2018 were provided in your packets. Are there any omissions, additions, or corrections for work session January 22, 2018? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Council Member Williams makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Council Member Carnes seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we will move right into presentations. Our first presentation tonight will be two proclamations read by Council Member Kathy Manis, 2018 Assistant High School Principal of the Year and 2018 <coughs> Middle School Principal of the Year proclamation. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, your state of the town was fabulous and part of that that you talked about was the growth in our town and a lot of our growth is because of the wonderful school district that we have here in Lexington School District 1. So tonight I'd like to welcome our superintendent Dr. Greg Little who is with us tonight and also award-winning principal and assistant principal um, this year we have Dr. Thomas Rivers at Pleasant Hill Middle School who is the middle school principal of the year for the state of South Carolina and we also have Miss Erica Page who is the high school assistant principal of the year for South Carolina. Dr. Luke Clamp could not be with us tonight. He will be with us at our next meeting, but he is the high school principal of the year for the state of South Carolina. So we are just award winning all over the place this year and I am so proud of that. I'm proud as a parent and I'm proud as a community leader. So thank you for what you do for our school district and I would like to ask Erica Page and Dr. Thomas Rivers if y'all would go to the podium please and I'm going to read the proclamation and Dr. Little if you'd like to join them that would be great and then we'll come down and present it to you okay. So this is a proclamation of the mayor and council for the town of Lexington congratulating Erica Page 2018 South Carolina High School Assistant Principal of the Year. Whereas Erica Page graduated from Baldwin Wallace College in Ohio with a Bachelor of Arts in Health Promotion and Education and in Physical Education, and whereas Ms. Page completed her Master's of Education in Education Administration at the University of South Carolina, and whereas Ms. Page began teaching at White Knoll High School in 2007, where she taught strategies for success, developed the Leadership for 21st Century course, taught Leadership 21, coordinated the School Improvement Council, and assisted and served as a trained mentor. And whereas in 2012, Ms. Page was promoted to the position of Assistant Administrator at Pillion High School and Assistant Principal in 2014, and has served at the College Board Testing Coordinator, Supervisor of the Center for Advanced Agribusiness, Supervisor of Guidance, and 504 and Homebound Administrator. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Mayor and Council for the Town of Lexington that Erica H. Page is hereby recognized and congratulated for being named the 2018 South Carolina High School Assistant Principal of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> one we have tonight is a proclamation of the mayor and council for the town of Lexington congratulating Dr. Thomas Rivers the 2018 South Carolina middle school principal of the year whereas Dr. Thomas E. Rivers received his bachelor's and master's degree from James Madison University another master's degree from the University of West Alabama and principal certification, educational specialist degree, and his doctorate degree in education administration from the University of South Carolina. And whereas in 1996, Dr. Rivers began his career as coordinator of multicultural student affairs at the <coughs> University of South Carolina and began teaching there in 1997, later becoming the interim director of multicultural student affairs in 1999. And whereas Dr. Rivers joined the South Carolina 
Department of Education's Office of Curriculum and Standards as an education associate in 2000. He became the Dean of Academics at C.A. Johnson High School in 2001 and was promoted to assistant principal in 2006. And whereas in 2008, Dr. Rivers entered Lexington School District 1 as assistant principal at Gilbert High School and was promoted to principal of Pleasant Hill Middle School in 2011. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the mayor and council for the town of Lexington that Dr. Thomas E. Rivers is hereby recognized and congratulated for being named the 2018 South Carolina Middle School Principal of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely. The podium is yours. If you'd like to say anything, we'd love to hear from you. Nothing prepared, but I am always humbled by these opportunities to kind of stand for, before um, the elected officials. I appreciate the recognition. Lexington County is a fabulous place to live and to raise a family. Um, just so honored to be here and to serve the community. Um, we strive as a district to make sure that we are taking care of the students each and every day to provide a place where they are safe, and they are getting the best education possible and the support that you give us each and every day makes our job easy and so we thank you so much i'm always humbled by this opportunity and thank you so much for recognizing uh, me this evening thank you absolutely thank you so much as well i um, could not be more honored to be standing in front of you this evening um, my heart is in everything I do for our students, for our community, and um, just to make Lexington County School Dif District 1 a better place and a great place for our students to learn, grow, and, th and thrive. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Little, you have anything you'd like to add? Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm the son, of, uh, grandson of a Baptist preacher, so I mean, I always have something to say. But um, I just, I, I want to say, in January of, of 2016, I made one of the best decisions of my life, and that's when I said yes to Lexington District One. And as I come, I, as I've come down here, I, I found that Lexington is a great place to live and work and learn and play. Um, but what makes it so special? Uh, what I think the most important thing that makes us special is our people. And you see, these are, this is a great example tonight with the middle school principal of the year, the high school principal of the year, the high school assistant principal of the year. Our people make the difference, and uh, I am so thankful for that. I'm also thankful for the partnership that we have with Lexington uh, City Government, uh, Chief Green, uh, the town council, across the board, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have a wonderful partnership. Great schools do not exist in, in a vacuum. It takes teamwork, and it takes a community working together. And uh, I appreciate your support as a town council and as a town administrator, Mr. Poole. Let me not uh, be remiss to, to not mention him as well. We greatly appreciate that. And it's because of that teamwork and partnership that we're as good as we are. So thank you very much for your Absolutely. support. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we are certainly glad you made that decision as well. Our next presentation tonight is from Miss Barbara Wilm and Amy Lanier from the Lexington Medical Center. If y'all would like to please come forward.
Lexington Medical Center feels very personal about the people in Lexington County and we've been shown over and over again that the people in Lexington Fa County feel very personal about Lexington Medical Center and we were thrilled and humbled as the Lexington Medical Center Foundation when Brett Poole came to us and said that the employees of the town of Lexington were looking for another charity to support besides the United Way in their employee campaign. And they chose Lexington Medical Center Foundation as one of the charities that the employees could support. And we promise to be good stewards of that money and to support programs that help our patients and our community and we were overwhelmed that the employees of the town of Lexington contributed $12,148 to wow. Lexington Medical Amazing. Center Foundation. Wow. That's Thank fantastic. You. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. You earned it. Since you're here tonight, if you don't mind, um, it hasn't been mentioned in the news, but maybe it'll get out there now. Um, the only coverage that was uh, talked about from the Amtrak train wreck was the patients that went to Richland. Well, <laughs> yeah, I did too. And it should be noted that Lexington Medical Center handled, I think, 30... 31 patients off of that as well. Um, so great job for what y'all do in helping us have a safe community. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on, our next presentation tonight is from Corporal Cameron Mortensen and Cassie Aliyah from Heroes in Blue. Heroes in Blue presentation at this time. I'm actually going to give it. Oh, let me start over. Our next presentation tonight is from Chief Terrence Green. I know you had a great video, but you know. I did. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, each year, our, our, our fall festival, um, the community sows seed to the police department with the Adopt a Cop uh, program. And with us, we like to sow that seed back in the community. And let me tell you about the Heroes in Blue. Uh, Heroes in Blue is a nonprofit organization committed to pro pro promoting police and community relationships through empathy and action. Heroes in Blue honors Officer Greg Elia, who was killed in the line of duty September 30, 2015. Hello. Heroes in Blue has grown from a hashtag movement for, for change to touching countless lives in South Carolina. The Lexington Police Department has a great relationship with Heroes in Blue and together have worked together on several community-based projects such as Pancakes and Police with Eggs Up Grill, mm -hmm. National Night Out, the Lexington Police Department Fall Festival, and most recently, the Lexington Police Department Heroes in Blue adopted a Park North Apartments and provided Greg's Grocery for all residents and Christmas gift for over 130 children in the complex this year. So our donation will go to Heroes in Blue. I told Cassie that her organization has brought law enforcement and Midlands closer together. Right. So if Mayor, if you would come down and we want to present a small token of appreciation to Cassie and the Heroes in Blue. Thank you so much.
Calvin, go over there, buddy. Go over there. I'll fix it. Over there, buddy. <laughs> Okay, we had a cranky buddy. Sorry. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, okay, let me just get him. Sorry. He's fine. He's fine. Tell, go sit down, please. Okay. You want to come sit in the big chair up here? You want to come sit in the big chair? Come on. No? no. <laughs> okay. Tell, one second. Give me a second. Sorry. Really, really, of course. I'm so sorry. Okay, 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 I'm so This is what happens when you're three and tired. <laughs> 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 Mayor, Town yes, Council, uh, and Chief Green, I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for this generous donation and the support that we've received uh, from the Town of Lexington, especially Lexington Police Department, mm -hmm. since the beginning of our organization. Our organization, as Chief Green shared, is committed to promoting positive police and community relationships. When my husband died, I was deeply impacted by the divisiveness that's growing nationally between police and the communities that they serve. And so we are actively seeking ways that we can bring our police and communities closer together. And I know as we continue to grow statewide, and I believe eventually even nationally, that Lexington Police Department is going to serve as a model of best practices for how police can connect with their communities and serve and go beyond the call of duty each and every day. And your officers <coughs> that serve the town of Lexington under Chief Green's leadership are uh, shining stars for that approach. And I couldn't be more proud to be partners with them in this work uh, and to be able to learn from them and their expertise in, in caring for people. I also want to thank our team for joining me here tonight. As Chief Green noted, uh, Heroes in Blue is about bringing we're, we represent and we're connected to law enforcement agencies throughout our state and tonight alone we have uh, family members or police de um, police officers representing Forest Acres Police Department, Casey Police Department, Lexington County, and uh, Lexington Police Department. So that's a small example of how we uh, all stand together and I'm really proud to stand with you. Thank you. Very good, Cassie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Green, thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, we will open up for public hearings. Speakers are limited to five minutes. Our first public hearing is final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 5596-01-018, located at 142 Brickyard Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, moving on to item number two, final reading of an ordinance authorizing a multi-county industrial park for property near I-20 and Augusta Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, that concludes our public hearing. We will move right into old business. We will now hear our first item of old business from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 5496. Dash zero one dash zero three five, located at one one eight Bickley Road, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Kevin Johnson owns eleven point two acres, located at one one eight Bickley Road, and has petitioned to annex the property. A thirty-five unit single-family subdivision is being planned on a portion of the site. Properties in the town near this one are zoned protected residential, and Bickley Road is classified as a limited local road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during the November meeting and recommended zoning the property protected residential too. The Commission also recommended classifying the portion of Bickley Road as a local road and reclassifying the remainder of Bickley Road as a local road. I make a motion for final reading of approval. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Baker seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. 
Our next item of old business is from Council Member Kathy Manis, final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 5596-01-018, located at 142 Brickyard Road. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Tidewater Boats LLC recently purchased 20.8 acres located at 142 Brickyard Road and has petitioned to annex the property. A brick manufacturing facility is currently located on the site. Properties in town near this one are zoned industrial and general commercial. Brickyard Road is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their January meeting and recommended industrial zoning for the property. I make a motion for final reading approval. Councilmember Manis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Stambolita seconds. The motion any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Councilmember Ted Stambolitis, final reading of an ordinance authorizing a multi county industrial park for property near I 20 and Augusta Road. Councilmember Ted Stambolitis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of town council. The property formerly known as Boral Brick Property is part of a plan to establish a multi county industrial park or MCIP. Since the property is slated to be annexed by the Town of Lexington, an ordinance of the Town of Lexington agreeing to the MCIP and its incentives is necessary for the property to qualify for MCIP incentive offered by the county. The proposed, the proposed ordinance is attached. I'd like to make a motion for final re approval of an ordinance agreeing to a multi-county industrial park and incentive. Council Member Stambolides makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Corrin seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Todd Carnes. Final reading of an ordinance to issue Corley Mill Redevelopment Project Area Tax Increment Bond Series 2017. Council Member Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In May of 2017, Town Council adopted the Corley Mill Redevelopment Plan and created the related Tax Increment Financing District for financing the redevelopment projects identified in the redevelopment plan. The TIF bond ordinance will authorize the issuance of Corley Mill TIF bonds, provided for, provide for their repayment solely from the incremental revenues generated by the Corley Mill TIF district, and cover related matters. As part of the overall financing plan, the town will sell the Corley Mill TIF bond to the Saxagotha Lexington Public Facilities Corporation. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for final reading approval of an ordinance to issue Corley Mill Redevelopment Project Area Tax Increment Bond Series 2018. Council Member Collins makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Ron Williams. Final reading of an ordinance to authorize the issuance of corporation bonds and bans. Council Member Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Sex Gotha Lexington Public Facilities Corporation was created as a nonprofit corporation for the financing of public facilities for the town of Lexington. The corporation's board of directors is comprised of Lexington Town Council. <coughs> the corporation was initially utilized in the financing of Town Hall in 1994 and more recently with the Ice House TIF. The financing plan for the Corley Mill Redevelopment Project includes the issuance of corporation bans and bonds to be funded from Corley Mill TIF revenues. Any shortfall in payment of the corporation bonds from Corley Mill TIF revenues will be reimbursed by the town, subject to non-appropriation in any fiscal year by the town. Accordingly, Town Council needs to adopt an ordinance to approve the issuance of corporation bonds and bans. The overall result will be to provide sufficient assurance of repayment to allow the town to obtain much more favorable financing costs as compared to a standalone TIF bond. I'd like to make a motion for final re reading approval of an ordinance to authorize the issuance of corporation bonds and bans. Council Member Williams makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Stambolita seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we will move into new business. Our first item of new business is from Council Member Steve Baker. First reading of an ordinance for a multi-county industrial park incentive 
at 307 Industrial Drive. Council Member Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Team 6 Properties LLC owns a parcel of land described as Lexington County TMS 005-498-05-042 with an address of 307 Industrial Drive. The property is part of a plan to establish a multi-county industrial park. Since the property is slated to be annexed by the Town of Lexington, an ordinance of the Town of Lexington agreeing to the MCIP and its incentives is necessary for the property to qualify for the MCIP incentive offered by the county. The draft ordinance is attached. I make a motion for first reading approval of an ordinance for a multi-county industrial park incentive at 307 Industrial <coughs> Drive. Councilmember Baker makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Corn seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Item number two, first reading of an ordinance allowing abandoned buildings tax credits. Mayor Pro Tem, Hazel Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The property formerly known as the Boyle Brick property is part of a plan to establish a multi-county industrial park. The MCIP credit has been applied for and the property owner also wished to apply for the abandoned building tax credits. The draft ordinance is attached. I make a motion for first reading of approval of ordinance allowing abandoned building tax credits for the former Boar Brick property. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Baker seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Kathy Manis. First reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 3500 03 151 and 152 and 153 and 012 and 155 and 154 and 065 and 052 and 011, located at Darby Ambrose Lane. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. The Drafts family owns 43.8 acres on nine parcels located on Darby Ambrose Road and have petitioned to annex the property. The Craker Company is planning a corporate office and 84,000 84, square foot warehouse on the property. Properties in town near this one are zoned general commercial. Darby Ambrose Road is classified as a limited local road. Due to the intended use of the property, the owners requested industrial zoning on 32.62 acres of the property and protected residential 2 zoning on 11.26 acres. The Planning Commission reviewed this proposal during their January meeting and recommended against annexing the property with the requested zoning classification. I make a motion to recommit this item to the Planning Commission. Councilmember Manis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor to recommit to the Planning Commission, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Councilmember Ted Stambolitis. First reading of an ordinance to acquire property on Shore Road. Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of Town Council. The, plan, the town plans to expand the Shore Road pump station as a part of a long-term water and sewer system capital improvements plan, or CIP. Additional property is needed for the expansion and to currently improve access to the site for ongoing operations. Adjacent property is being developed as an expansion of the Fox Chase subdivision. The developer has agreed to sell the, the town approximately half an acre of additional property for the pump station in exchange for seven sewer taps, sewer, country, sewer capital contribution fees for the total value of $25,900. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Town Council, I'd like to make a motion to first read an approval of an ordinance to acquire property on Shore Road. Council Member Stambolitis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Council Member Williams seconds the motion. Any discussion? Mr. Poole. Yes, yes sir. sir. Mr. Williams. Sorry, uh, did, did we... Are we going to have an appraisal done on this property before we purchase it, or it'll be purchased just on a negotiation? Yeah, it was it was done under appraisal and an agreement with the exchange of the CCA. Thanks, sir. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It's unanimous. 
Our next item of new business is from Council Member Todd Carnes, first reading of an ordinance limiting lane closures on US 1 and US 378 and South Carolina Highway 6. Council Member Todd Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, before I start, this is one that everybody's been waiting on. So uh, <laughs> it's the good news that uh, the town of Lexington is going to love. <coughs> At the January work session, Council discussed the passage of an ordinance intended to give town officials authority on all land closures associated with new building construction within the town limits along US 378, US 1, and SC 6. While the South Carolina Department of Transportation issues permits that allow for lane closures between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., in many cases, contractors have exceeded these times. By granting <coughs> town staff the authority to approve all closures along these routes, it will help to address some of the traffic issues. The suggestion has been made that no more than a two-hour temporary lane closure be permitted during daytime hours and any lane closures requiring a lengthier amount of time would be required to be after 7 p.m. and before 6 a.m. So this ordinance is uh, empowering our town staff to do something they haven't had the power to do in past days when many of you have asked these questions uh, because DOT was in charge of primarily enforcing the rules on contractors and we are now shifting enforcement to our <coughs> town to prevent some of the chaos and mess that we have all lived through during lane closures. So Mr. Mayor, I make a, uh, a motion for first reading approval of this ordinance limiting lane closures on US 1, 3, US 378, and SC 6. Council Member Collins makes a motion. Do I have a second? second. second. Everyone <laughs> second. <laughs> Which I knew was going to happen. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mayor. And we'll take it that way. Yes, sir, Can Ms. Can we Williams. vote on this, adjourn, and reconvene and vote on it again? <laughs> <laughs> get a final reading tonight? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. We can't do that. But we are going to move it pretty quick. Quick as we can. Very good. We have a motion and a second. I know there is no discussion in that. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you for that. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ron Williams, Lexington One Foundation Request. Council Member Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. During the January 22nd Council Work Session, Ms. Uh, Julie Washburn, Executive Director of the Lexington School District One Foundation, Education Foundation, submitted a contribution request for a $2,500 diamond sponsorship for the annual Celebration of Excellence in Education, the event to be held February 28th at the Brooklyn Banquet and Conference Center. Council has budgeted $1,000 for this annual event since March 2004. The event spotlights the academic top 10% of seniors from each of the five high schools in the district. Um, I'd like to uh, make a recommendation due to this year's budget being 1,000 that this year we approve $1,000 and if staff could look at maybe raising that for next year. Council Member Williams makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Stambolita seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Steve Baker, Boards and Commissions Appointment. Council Member Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Ms. Lisa Gibson has submitted a Boards and Commissions application and indicated an interest in serving on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Ms. Gibson is a town resident and currently serves as a member of the Planning Commission. I make a motion for Council approval. Council Member Baker makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Count Mayor Pro Tem seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, Council Member Menace. I, I would like to recommend that we have this go into effect after the February um, Planning Commission meeting. Um, we just sent, sent something back to the Planning Commission that Ms. Gibson was a part of. And um, I would like for her to stay on the Planning Commission until we've had the opportunity to go over that. So. Um, John, is there a uh, hurry to get her on this other committee? No, I don't think they're getting married till March. Right? Yeah, they're not getting married till March 24th, so, so she could actually good. stay till March 20 after the March 21st. But that's why she's coming off planning commission. Yeah. Yeah. We we had something to do with this marriage. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's coming. Off. Okay. John, are you in? Uh, no. 
Very right. good. We are good to do that, Miss Mays. So are we going to do it February or March? Will she stay March. until March? I say March. Leave her alone till She's March. She's a great member of the planning commission. I, think I yeah. hate to lose her. So if we can You're getting a good weekend. person. At this point, I don't need her until April because we won't have a board of zoning appeals meeting at least until April. Okay. 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 So we'll keep her through March. And then, thanks, Keith. We'll move her to zoning appeals. You might as well explain it, Mr. Mayor. Yes. She is so marrying she, Mr. Keith Frost. Yeah. Both uh, the chairman, Mr. Keith Frost, <laughs> uh, and Ms. Gibson. Gibson both serve on the planning commission mm -hmm. and they are engaged congratulations yes. uh, and they will be married in March so we are going to keep her till before the wedding um, but felt like because they were married they needed to be separated from that position thank you very much we have a motion and a second all those in favor please raise your right hand that is unanimous our next item of business is from Council Member Kathy Manis, Pilgrim Point Streetlights. Council Member Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. In accordance with the town's residential streetlight ordinance, the Pilgrim Point Homeowners Association has requested that the town again pay a pro rata sh share of their streetlight bill. A copy of their letter is attached. There are 48 lots in Pilgrim Point, and the town ordinance states that the town would be responsible for one street light per six lots, which equals eight lights. The total requested is $1,669. I make a motion for council approval. Council Member Manis makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Council Member Ted Stambouli is second. So motion, any further discussion? I do this every year and I'm sorry, Mr. Poole, but I, I think it, it it requires some explanation so that everyone out there listening and watching understands why we are paying for these streetlights and not everybody's streetlights. Yes, sir. Well, you are paying for all the neighborhoods and towns streetlights. Uh, but the, not in this way. But not, not directly as this neighborhood is a private neighborhood. It has a private road. It has a fence. It has a fence to access a gated access. Um, so the existing ordinance won't allow for the normal process of us taking over those street lights and making the payments like we do in essentially every other neighborhood in town. So they have to go through a separate process and request that reimbursement every year. Very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Sir. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we will hear announcements from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and they're long tonight. First of all, our thoughts and prayers go out to the passengers of the Amtrak train that crashed in Pine Ridge this past weekend. We would also like to thank the many first responders, law enforcement officers, doctors, nurses, and personnel that were at the hospitals to take care of the passengers across Lexington that assisted at the scene. Please keep them all in your prayers, the families and all the first responders and doctors and nurses. On behalf of the council members, we would like to thank Mayor McDougal, the staff for the state of the town address. Uh, like I said earlier, I was just in awe with it. As pointed out in the video, we have accomplished a lot and there's still a lot to do. We would also like to thank our town citizens. So many of you work behind the scenes every day to help make Lexington a bet better place and we appreciate it. We would also like to congratulate Mayor McDougal for being named one of the 50 most influential people of Columbia Business Monthly magazine for the fifth straight year. The publication recognizes those who have made the most impact on the state and the region. Mayor McDougall serves in the leadership role of many government groups, committees, and boards, and at all these meetings, he never misses an opportunity to brag on the town of Lexington. We would like to wish Councilman Ted Stamberlees a happy belated birthday. He had a birthday on Groundhog Day, and we were not happy with the Groundhog, saying we had six more weeks. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Enjoy. The Board of Zoning Appeals and the Traffic Committee will not meet in February, but will resume meeting again in March. The Special Olympics will host the Lake Murray Polar Plunge this Saturday, February the 10th. Is it supposed to be cold? It From may not 11, be cold, but the lake is very cold. <laughs> From 11 to 1 at Lake Murray on the Lexton side, I understand that the Lexton Police Department has a team, so come out and enjoy this great event and watch our police participate. 
Also on Saturday is the Friends of the Lexington Library Father-Daughter Dance, which is a big deal around here. All the daddies get to dress up and with their little girls and take them to dinner and go out. From 6.30 to 9.30 at Lexington High School, tickets can be only purchased online at lmlfriends.org. The new date for the Lexington Blowfish Chili Cook-Off is this Sunday, February the 11th at the Ice House Amphitheater from 12 to 5. Tickets are $10 and may be purchased at the Blowfish office on Main Street or on the Blowfish website. Proceeds benefit our first responders, 911 Remembrance Foundation of South Carolina and the town of Lexington's to adopt the cops. So come out to that and support our law enforcement and different responders. Friends of the Lexington County Museum will host their annual, annual gala on February the 17th from 6 to 10 here at the Municipal Complex Conference Center. Tickets are $60 and may be purchased at the museum or online at www.lexingtoncountymuseum.org. Town Hall will be closed Monday, February the 19th in observance of President's Day. The next council work session will be Tuesday, February the 20th in the Eli Mack Room. The Planning Commission will meet on February the 21st at 8 a.m. here in Council Chambers. And that is all. Very good. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Are there any other announcements from any other council members? Mr. Council Mr. Member Manis. Um, first, I would like to thank our Planning Commission Chairman, Mr. Keith Frost, and member Jeannie Michaels for being here tonight, and also the Chairman of our Historic Preservation Committee, Chuck Corley, is with us tonight. So thank you all for being here. Um, February is Heart Health Month, and many of you may um, see that many of our members of town council are wearing red tonight. Um, in 1964, President Lyndon Johnson designated the first American Heart Month, and that's in February, and I just appreciate everyone wearing red. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Anyone else with any other comments? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Mr. Baker? Uh, two things. Just... Uh, I was in the state newspaper t today. Alla Diaz is opening tomorrow, so we're all very excited about that. And then secondly, some of you may have seen the news over the weekend. There was a passenger who was ejected from a car crash on I-77 who passed away. That vehicle is at my business currently, and just looking at that car, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that person should not have died. And so I just would like to encourage folks to buckle up. Um, it is the law, and it can save your life, and that, uh, that family's grieving a loss that they shouldn't have to, to grieve. So just like to encourage folks to buckle up. Great point. Thank you, Steve. Any other comments? Thank you. Any comments from the news media? I think they all left already. Any public comments regarding tonight's agenda? Anyone like to say anything about the agenda tonight? Hearing none, that concludes our business for this evening. Thank you for watching the Town of Council meeting for Town of Lexington. The meeting was held at Town Hall on Monday evening, February 5th, 2018. A recording of this meeting will be aired on the Town's Information Cable Channel 2 several times during this week. On behalf of Town Council and staff, I wish you all a good evening. Without objection, we are adjourned.